Today, we're speaking with Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Ottawa, also the Vice Chair of the Department of Psychiatry at Ottawa U, Dr. Simon Hatcher. Uh, I know you have a great deal uh, of research you've done in the world of mental health, Dr. Hatcher, and I look forward for you to share some of those insights with us. But I'd first like to thank you for joining us on the show today. So it's, it's a pleasure to be here, beaming out over Dauphin, Manitoba. Getting into it here, our mental health, uh, such a critical part of our overall sense of, of well-being. And I'm wondering, in your world of the scientific and research community, what kind are we noticing in terms of the challenges presented to our mental health as a result of this uh, pandemic, COVID-19 situation? Well, um, I, I think we're, we're living it in many ways. That lot, People working in this area are tired and anxious and fractious uh, about the continuing pandemic and I think that's reflected in the worries of people that we see quite frankly there's lots of anxiety about unemployment about what's going to happen uh, there's much fewer opportunities to attend to mental wellness at the moment because you can't go out um, and if you can you can only do a limited amount of stuff um, so I think for a lot of those reasons it's 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 really difficult for people at the moment now when we face the situation, we know there's a pretty broad spectrum of coping mechanisms, uh, some of them perhaps fruitful, maybe some of them a bit uh, less conducive of actually promoting well-being. In the world of coping mechanisms, uh, what is being noticed out there and what maybe would be a good direction for the public to head in, do you think? Um, well, the, the sort of things that make a difference are... Um, Things like you know, being connected socially, even though it is over Zoom. But I always think that seems, sounds a bit bland by just saying you should, you should be socially connected. You should you should talk to people, especially when we've been taught we're told to isolate. Um, I think a better way of doing it is is is, is I'll, I'll channel I'll channel my inner Jacinda Ardern, who's the New Zealand Prime Minister, and uh, it's be kind, be be kind to others. I think that's one of the one of the best best ways we wishing we can cope in the pandemic actually. I think that's a wonderful bit of advice. Um I read a blog of yours from a few years ago, Dr. Hatcher, uh, that when it comes to mental health, uh really there's you you've said that there's been pretty few advances over the past 20 years uh in terms of those mental health resources. Is that still something that you feel at this day and age or has there been a development of the uh, you know, utilizing the technology of what we could have for mental health resources for us Canadians? Um, there haven't been many major breakthroughs in, in, in mental health over the last 25 years. I mean, the treatments I, I offer people who I see now are pretty similar to what I was offering 25 years ago. Um, some things have changed, like using technology to deliver some of those, some of that help, and also the ways in which we interact with technology maybe, maybe providing opportunities for doing things slightly differently. Um, but you, you, know, you, you have to think that, um, you know, 100 years ago, there was the Spanish flu. And uh, of course, that was a time of rapid technological change then. And um, I can't help wondering if, if, if journalists even then were asking, do you think the telephone or the telegraph will change how you deal with patients who are, who are depressed after the Spanish flu? Uh, could, I, I haven't actually found any, any any examples of that yet, but there's lots of examples from the history of how we dealt with, uh, say, the Russian flu, the Spanish flu, about how people coped then, and, and a lot of it was around um, you know, managing the, the tension between having to isolate but still having to connect with people, um, you know, by limiting what you can do, but also making sure that you could still um, be useful. To other people um, that he did stuff that was that, that was helpful to other people helping others is one of the most uh, mentally uh, enabling things that you can do we're speaking with a professor of psychiatry at the University of Ottawa dr. Simon Hatcher dr. Hatcher um, I understand maybe it looks like you might be at home right now. Has that been something a part of your pandemic uh, life is a bit more working from home? And I understand you, like all of us, are facing some of these similar stressors, these adversaries to our mental health. Have you, despite all you know about mental health and these forces at play, have you yourself found it uh, almost 
a challenge as well, despite everything you know about the mechanisms and maybe the ways you could avoid uh, those pitfalls? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've been working at home. I, I do more working from home now um, because of the advantages of technology and Zoom and stuff like that. I can see people from home. Um, but I work, I work in hospital. I also work with the homeless population. And it's, it's very difficult because often they don't have access to the technology. So I'm still going into the shelters, seeing people on the streets, um, which is challenging. It's going to become more challenging as winter comes comes on um you know seeing seeing people in enclosed places um i really don't know how it's going to work out in, in shelters we're going to have to carry on doing what we have been doing which is a lot of testing and tracing and um you know, being creative and how we use space um so that's that, that's some of the ways it's affected me and of course like a lot of other people um i've had to cover for colleagues who've gone off with covid what that means is it's been really hard to take holidays and even when you do take any time off, there's actually nowhere to go anyway. Um, so um, that's how it's been affecting me personally as well, which, but I'm sure that's not unique. And you know, I'm, I'm fortunate in that uh, um, I've still got an income coming in uh, through work, which a lot of people haven't, of course. Uh, we mentioned maybe the lack of development in the past 25 years with mental health resources. Can you touch a bit more on where do things need to go? What kind of direction would we like to see mental health resources uh, so they can really make a difference in all the lives of Canadians who are having a tough time right now and pre and post pandemic? Well, I guess there's two ways. A lot, a lot of the effort in the last 25 years has got into trying to understand how the brain works. You know, that, that That's, that's partly why there hasn't been much progress. We still don't really understand how the brain works. Well, it's a complex organism in the body, uh, millions and millions of neurons. We don't really understand how it works. There still needs to be effort in doing that. But what would really help is if people, so that's one thing. The other thing that would help would be people having access to what we know helps. And that's the bit we're not doing very well at the moment, is accessing quality mental health care. Um, it's a very complex, difficult to... Um, navigate service um, and when you do get when, when you do find your way into the right door often the service you get isn't particularly great so one of the things we could do is actually do, do well what we know works at the moment I noticed on your website Dr. Hatcher hatchingideashub.com a fun play on your name, Dr. Hatcher. Now, we hear about these e-therapy offerings, online mental health resources, which I think you mentioned in your own words, seem to just be kind of an electronic version of the therapy that is already available to us. So how do you see the use of that technology really bridging the gap to new, creative, and effective ways, especially during this kind of pandemic situation? Well, there, there are a way of supporting face-to-face -face therapy when you can't see people face-to-face. Um, it's um, they, they vary from it almost like being reading a book so there's just a lot of information there uh, some of it's animated some of it's more active than just reading a book but it's essentially the same as reading a book to sites where um, you have the, the content but you also have a, a coach who ring who talks to you uh, zoom or phone or whatever who, who coaches you through the process um, and you know, for, for a lot of people, um, the, the second one, the coaching through online therapy, seems to be reasonably effective. You, you, have, to, you have to do the program. If you drop out, it's not effective. But if, if you do the program, the, the, these are quite effective. And they do actually seem to increase, again, if used properly, uh, and if people are able to access them, they do seem to be helpful. Dr. Hatcher, you're certainly a prolific contributor to your research community, and uh, we appreciate your time very much here on 7.30 CKDM as part of our health, wellness, and you feature. While, you, while we still have you on the line and uh, you know, you're broadcasting to the likes of the Dauphin community, and now we're posting this online, so I think we're getting a few more people as well. Is there anything else you would like to say on the topic of the widespread issues of challenges to our mental health through this pandemic situation and maybe any uh, direction or guidance that you would care to share for people as they try to navigate through these uh, choppy waters right now. One of, the, uh, one of the things we've done during the pandemic is to um, review all the evidence that links uh, pandemics to suicide, suicidal behavior, 
uh, and suicidal thoughts. We wanted to look at the, you know, what, what, if we could learn from the past, if we could learn from what people have done in the past. Because what we're going through now is not new. In fact, what we're going through now is in many ways the norm has been over history where people are faced with uh, uh, infectious epidemics which are hard to understand and can be lethal. And um, you know, I've, I've mentioned the Russian flu, the Spanish flu, there's also been SARS. Um, one of the take home messages is that they were horrible whilst it happened, but people got, people got through them. People survived. And there isn't a, a lot of evidence that going through pandemics like this actually increases things like suicide rates, which is a, which is a reassuring thing because suicide rates are often an indicator of mental health of a population. There's some evidence, but it's not particularly great. Um, the sort of things which do, which may affect people are then maybe the necessary economic consequences like unemployment, like uncertainty over where the next paycheck is coming from, that sort of thing. Um, so I think one of the take home messages is, is that these things are horrible when you go through them, but people do, do go through them. And often the other side of a pandemic, uh, it, it, there's often an explosion of creativity afterwards. Fascinating. Hey, Dr. Hatcher, I really do appreciate your time. Uh, you're a professor of psychiatry at the University of Ottawa. I know we can uh, check out a bit of the latest stuff you're up to at your website. Uh, that is, of course, hatchingideashub.com. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and uh, hopefully we get a chance to speak again soon. No worries, Matt. All right, take care.